We're going to start off with covalent Lewis dot structures. Just like with ionic, we need to start with our correct formula. So the formula we'll be working with today is carbon dioxide. You need to know prefixes for covalent compounds. Carbon doesn't have a prefix, so that means its subscript is one. Di means two, so I have two oxygens, CO2. Unlike with ionic, you cannot brute force covalent structures. You will get lots of different options that work with different amounts of a different atom element, but it will not match the actual compound unless you follow the nomenclature to formula rules for it. So once we have our correct formula for carbon dioxide, CO2, I'm gonna go ahead and again, draw the Lewis dot structures for the appropriate number of atoms. I have one carbon and two oxygens. Carbon being in column four will have four valence electrons, so I've given it four dots. And oxygen uh, being in column six will have six valence electrons, so I've given it six dots, and I just matched the uh, Lewis dot again. Then I am going to draw lines to connect my lonely electrons. So lines, not arrows, and my lonely electrons are going to be the ones that are not already in pairs. So this is a lonely electron. This is not a lonely electron. It might take a couple of times to actually figure out where those lines are supposed to go so that everybody gets included and everybody has eight valence electrons. But we're gonna go ahead and say first try, you got it right. So we went lonely, lonely, and we have connected all of the lonely electrons together. Now that we have all of those lonely electrons connected and they are no longer lonely, we're gonna redraw the structure and make it pretty. Unlike with our ionic compounds where we made the arrows disappear whenever we made the structure pretty. With covalent, we are going to keep those lines as they are signifying a bond and a sharing of those electrons. So I had two lines going from carbon to oxygen. So whenever I redrew it, I had two lines going from carbon to oxygen. And same thing here, two lines, two lines. I do need to make sure that I am not leaving out any of the electrons that were initially in the actual compound. So we had uh, oxygen with two lone pairs. So oxygen in our actual final compound needs to also have two lone pairs. Last thing I need to do is I need to count to make sure that everybody has eight to make sure that I made the correct number of bonds. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to count here. So we have, for oxygen, we have one, two, three, four, and each line is two. So we have five, six, seven, eight. So this oxygen is happy. And then I'm gonna grab a different color for carbon just so that it's a little bit easier to see the difference. So for carbon, again, each line is gonna be two electrons, as you can see from the original drawing of the line. So carbon is gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. So carbon is also happy. And then finally, we have this last oxygen who is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this other oxygen is also happy. Since everybody has eight, we are all good. And we can go ahead and say that this is the correct Lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide. A couple of special notes for covalent Lewis. Uh, my leftmost atom on the periodic table, as well as in the actual formula, most likely will be the central atom. I say most likely because hydrogen is an exception. It only has one valence electron. It can only form one bond, and therefore it will not be my, uh, my central atom. Each line within a covalent compound is going to represent two electrons being shared. Okay, so with those two things in mind, 
and just remembering that everybody has to be able to have access to an octet except for hydrogen, you should be good to go for covalent Lewis dot structures.